the next part of Cinderella Phenomenon. I do believe we are on part 10 now. Uh, it's been a while since I made my last video because uh, life has been uh, crazy busy. But here we are and let's get right into it. The man starts walking towards us slowly. Waltz moves to stand in front of me. Princess, stay close to me. Good evening, Princess Lisette. Oh, he sounds like a bad guy. Good evening. <laughs> and good evening to you too, Peter Pan. No, <laughs> oh, he's so cute. The man drops into an elegant bow. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Varg. Oh, I like that name. And what do you want, Varg? How do you know who we are? I'd love to stay and chat, but I have more important things to do. The princess is coming with me. I certainly am not. <laughs> and Varg takes one long stride towards us. He taps the cane he is holding onto the ground. A surge of light emanates from the cane, then flares out towards us. Princess, go back to the merchant. Hurry! Walt starts towards Varg before I can stop him. Varg raises his cane and twists it in one sharp movement. Light abruptly changes direction and slams into Walt's side, throwing him some distance away. No! <laughs> no! Don't hurt him! Walt! Before I can step away, Varg has lifted me in... No! No! Let go! <laughs> Let go of me! Varg has lifted me into his arms. He grins at me almost wolfishly before darting away from Waltz. No! Princess! Oh no, I don't like this. <sighs> let me go! No can do, Princess. I let you go and... I let you go and things will get messy. What do you want from me? Are you a... I cannot even say the word. My blood runs cold as I consider the situation. Are you a witch? That I'm not. And you expect me to believe you? You just used magic back there. I guess I did. Let me go. I squirm in his arms, attempting to kick and push him away from me. Varg abruptly stopped with a grunt to let me down. This is my chance. I start to bolt away from him, but he quickly grabs my wrist and pulls me back. Not so fast. Get your hands off me. I'm not here to hurt you, Princess. After what you did to Waltz, he leans in towards me until I can look until he can look me in the eyes. Well, he was in the way. Besides, it's not like I killed him. You do have a good point there. <laughs> Varg begins to walk again. Varg begins walking again, this time pulling me with him. I try to break away from his iron grip, but fail. Where are you taking me? Back to where you truly belong. If there's one thing I've learned from fairy tales, it's that a princess belongs in a palace. I am unable to stop the gasp that leaves my lips. He stops and turns to me. You've been away from home for far too long, Princess. Don't you want to go back? I... I do want to go home, but I'm not welcome there anymore. At least not why I... At least not while I am still cursed. Release her. <gasps> Ooh, is this karma? Please be karma. Please be karma. <laughs> Varg releases me just in time to block a sword strike that comes out of the darkness of the trees. <laughs> It's him! I'm so cute! I gush over him, he's little, but he's, he's my very favourite of characters. How annoying. I could say the same thing about you. I back away as the two trade blows. What was that? <sighs> it's the cat being noisy. Sorry. I back away as the two trig blows. Varg uses Kane to defend himself against the man that just emerged from the trees. Oh, it's obviously karma, come on. 
That man, he's the one who is with Waltz. The man with the sword that helped me, helped save me from the bandits all those months ago. It's really been that long? There is something graceful in the way the man moves as he swings his sword at bar. He almost looks like he's dancing. The stranger continues swiping the sword, eventually gaining enough leverage to force Varg back. He moves so quickly that it takes all of Varg's reflexes simply to block his slashes. They're so fast. Varg takes a few steps back and keeps a safe distance from the stranger. Impressive. The man gives Varg a lopsided smile as he points his sword at him. The two of them temporarily frozen as they eat wait that as it each wait for the other to move first. You're not too bad yourself. Wait, is that? It certainly is. <laughs> now that he has stopped, and I have a better look at him, I can see that the stranger's features are uncannily, are uncannily similar to Karma's. Karma? But is it really him? Princess, are you okay? Oh, I'm glad you're okay. You're back, hooray! <clears throat> Excuse me. I turn my head to see Waltz and Dolora. Oh, oh, Dolores here. Rushing towards me. How did you find me? Dolora used the magic to track you. Thankfully, no other witches beat us here. <sighs> Waltz halts in front of me while Dolora advances towards the two men. So what do we have here? Dolora, right? Can't say that it's a pleasure to meet you. I have to compliment you all. I have to compliment you all. You did an impressive job hiding the princess from us. It took a while to finally track her down. Finding your so-called tavern was difficult, you know? But I got lucky. How does he know about the tavern? No sooner are the words out of Vargas' mouth that the swordsman is suddenly upon him again. Post. Post to attack. Varg blocks his sword a second too late and is forced to back away, clutching his now bloody arm. You talk too much. Oh, that's, that's kind of sexy. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't, have got, I shouldn't have forgotten my manners in front of royalty. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Vargas' gaze turns to Dolora, a smirk somehow still on his face despite his injury. You have quite an interesting bunch with you, which... How about joining us instead? We can always use more witches like yourself. Thanks, but no thanks. Too bad. Varg turns to look at me. Excuse me. I am forever tired. He holds out a hand and gestures me towards him. Come with me, princess. <laughs> Come with me if you want to live. That was an honor you reference, and I'm all short snagger. Anyway, so I get easily distracted. You know you don't belong here. I clench my hands into fists as I shake my head. Oh... Your mother won't be very happy with your decision, Princess. Especially after all she's done to make sure you'll be a suitable heir. Mother? What are you talking about? But Varg ignores me as he raises his cane. I decide to leave the party so quickly. But I'll be back soon enough for you, Princess. Oh, so confident. Next time, whether you like it or not, you'll be coming with me. And off he goes. I'm not done with you. <laughs> I love this story so much. <laughs> Delora, th Delora throws her hands out, beginning to gather light in her palms, but Vark has already brought his cane down on the ground. I love that sound of that cane. Tuck, tuck. Thick smoke envelops the area, making my eyes water. When the smoke clears, Varg is gone. No! He did the escape! <sighs> Dolora huffs in annoyance as she lowers her arms back down to her side. 
just need to put the volume down a teeny tiny bit. It seems like those witches are using my humor to do all their dirty work. What was that cane he was carrying? I sheathed the sword and is walking towards where Waltz, Delora and I are standing. It's an enchanted item. That cane, ha that cane has been infused with a spell that allows Varg to use magic. Limited magic, but powerful and making dangerous. Well, it is far easier for a human to explore the kingdom without anyone getting suspicious. The stranger stands close enough for me to get a proper look at his face. I can no longer deny the resemblance I saw earlier. Karma, is that you? Is that really you? Ah. <laughs> He's so gorgeous with his hair up. You have good eyes, darling. Hardly, it's so obvious. So this is what Karma looks like as a man. Why does he need to disguise himself as a woman? I open my mouth to question when I am interrupted by Walter's hand on my shoulders. Are you hurt anywhere? I turn to Walter and freeze when I notice his dry blood on his forehead. You are bleeding. You are bleeding. I'll be fine. I step back and realise that Waltz is standing oddly, favouring one... Oh no! Varg must have been... Varg must have badly hurt him. Oh no! You shouldn't have come here. I had to. It's my fault Varg got you in the first place. Waltz forces a smile, but I can see the sadness. Oh... I couldn't protect you at all. I'm so sorry. Why do you keep worrying about me? I'm not even hurt. What if something happened to you? Walt smiles. He tries with great effort. <laughs> oh no! I'm sad now! Oh gosh! I'm... Can't be the happy princess. It doesn't matter what happens to me, as long as you aren't hurt. How can you say that? I... Ugh. Well, his expression suddenly twists as he doubles over. His eyes glaze. <sighs> Delora catches one of Walt's arms, supporting him as she turns to address both Karma and I. When she's returned to the marchant, Rumpel needs to see to Walt's injuries. Rumpel? I'll explain everything once we're back. Oh yes, he's a healer, isn't he? He's a doc doctor of some kind. Delora calls for Rumpel as soon as we arrive at the mansion. When Rumpel enters the reception area, he is clearly distraught by Walter's injuries. I would be too. And in fact, I am. <laughs> oh, even though it's just a story, it's just... I get so attached to the characters and stuff. Anyway. What happened? He'll first explain later. I expect Bumble to object, and I'm surprised when he does nothing more than nod. Carefully, Rumpel leads Waltz back into his room so he can be treated. Delora looks in the direction Rumpel and Waltz have gone, with a thoughtful look on her face. We're lucky to have Rumpel here with us. Anise is good with herbs and small wounds, but Rumpel has experience with more serious injuries. Experience? What are you talking about? Remember his curse? Rumpel is not the only one who does not remember who he is. None of the townsfolk, townsfolk remember his name either. What about those with the cure? The, but what about those with the curse? Shouldn't they at least still be able to remember his name? Rumpel is an exception to the rule, as he is with many things. In his case, not a single person can remember his name. The funny thing is, they can still recognize him. He ran into someone who called him a doctor today. Even just hearing it brought back a memory. He's got one of the chapters of his journal back now. He's quite the proficient doctor. He collects his journal pages by retrieving memories from others that still remember him. What a strange curse. My eyes wander around the reception area, and I notice that someone is missing. Is it Waltz? <laughs> oh, Karma, of course. Where's Karma? Don't worry about him, he's probably changing now. 
I do not understand why Karma is so secretive about his reason for wearing a disguise. I'm about to ask Dolora if she knows any of the specifics of Karma's curse. Isn't that a bit personal? <laughs> Should she be asking him directly? When the door to the reception area is thrown open. <gasps> Please be Karma. <laughs> oh. Princess! I'm surprised when Ellie suddenly throws her arms around me. She pulls me into a tight hug. Oh. I was so worried about you, thank goodness you're so... Oh, she's such a sweetheart. <laughs> she pulls away and begins to wipe up tears that have sprung to her eyes. W why are you crying? <laughs> because I was worried about you, silly. Was she really so worried she'd cry? Why? I'm intensely aware of the awkwardness of the situation. But thank you for worrying about me. I thought the words might do something to ease her worries, but her sobbing only grows louder. Uh, Anise? Uh, I'll get you something warm to drink. Oh, she's so sweet. <laughs> I stare off after Anise before I look, uh, before I turn to look at Delor Delora worryingly. Did I say something wrong? Quite the opposite, actually. You made her very happy. I did? But she was crying. I called tears of joy, princess. I'd be overwhelmed too if you were suddenly nice to me. <laughs> oh, you sarcastic little thing, you. Miracles tend to bring people to tears. I just said thank you. And that was a kindness in and of itself. No wonder she's so happy. <laughs> yes, coming from you. <laughs> I mean me. <laughs> I was being kind. And congratulations, Princess. I see that you've managed to complete your first good deed. <gasps> this deserves a round of applause! Hooray! A hand moves instinctively to my pendant. I clutch at my new piece that hangs there. I knew you could do it. Dolores smiles warmly. For some reason, it makes me feel strangely proud. Parfait walks into the room, startling us both. It has been two weeks since I last saw her. Oh no! You know that continuously using your magic takes a toll on your body. I have no choice. The witches. Her voice trails off as her eyes meet Dolores. Parfait and Dora look at each other solemnly. Tension in the room mounts as they continue to stare at each other without uttering a word. Exactly. Oh, eventually, Parfait's eyes wander to me. Keeping her in the dark won't make the situation any better, Dolora. Parfait moves towards me, but her knees buckle before I can reach Dolora. Before I can reach... <sighs> I think I need my cup of coffee soon. <laughs> before I can react, Dolora is already at her side supporting her. Coffee, you need to rest. I'll take care of this. Now, she needs to hear this from both of us. Hmm. I know what it is. Uh, I've already played this before, as I mentioned already. But it's this must be such a huge shock to character. What is going on? We wanted to tell you about this later, but we can no longer afford to wait. Delora helps Parfait to a chair and tentatively takes the seat opposite the two of them. We're going to tell you the whole truth of this situation. The whole truth? Dolores sighs before she eventually speaks. Do you know why I cursed you, Princess? <sighs> Some twisted sense of mischief? Well, that too, probably. <laughs> That's not the whole reason I said that. <laughs> oh my gosh. We need you to change your ways, Princess, to change how you see the world. If we didn't do something, you're going to end up as merciless and cold-hearted as your mother. What are you talking about? My eyes go to Parfait, but she doesn't meet my gaze. Hill dear, your mother was not always so cruel. Parfait's eyes look wet as if she's about to cry. Why are you speaking as if you knew her? <gasps> hmm? She's my friend. Long before she was queen, Hill dear was like a sister to me. What was that noise? 
but she changed when the witch hunt started. What does the witch hunt have to do with mother? Oh, uh, spoiler, she's a witch. <gasps> oh, no, I shouldn't have said that. Whoopsie. Parfait does not meet my eyes, but Dolora is looking right at me. Your mother was a witch, she said, for the fact. Gasp. Hildy was a terror. Tenebrum. I forgot how to say the word. <laughs> Bearer. My heart drops into, into the pit of my stomach. No! Impossible! <laughs> That's impossible! I've never... I've never saw... I've never saw her use my... Shouldn't it be... I've never seen her use magic? I've never saw her use magic? I think that's incorrect. Anyway, she cannot be a witch. That's what she wanted you to believe. You cannot keep something like that a secret. If you try hard enough, you can keep anything a secret. If you try hard enough, you can keep... Oh, even from your own family. Sorry, I glanced away. <laughs> but how? Laura pauses for a long moment before she speaks. <sighs> oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm so very sleepy. She erased your memories, he said. The air leaves my lungs as I struggle to remain calm. What said Mother ordered my memories to be erased? But... Are they saying that it was Mother herself who erased my memories? Jacked pieces of memory and thoughts begin to snap together in my mind. She needed you obedient and compliant. Whenever you answered that, she took that memory of disobedience from you. Hmm. And it didn't take long at all to mold you into her perfect and unquestioning little doll. Oh dear. I gripped my dress without realising. My hands are shaking. Then I did know what's. Mother really did erase my memories of him. How much of my childhood did I lose? The old dear cherished humans before. She was kind and selfless. She was devoted to maintaining the balance between Lucius and the terror. <coughs> the hands. Delora moved to place a gentle hand on Parfait's shoulder. It's not your fault. I trusted him too much. He swore that there would be only stories. Small fantasies to share with his children. Hildir wanted to turn him away, but I disagreed. I allowed Hans to weave his tales about witches and fairies. The fairy tales? Delora nods. Hans, fairy tales become hugely popular, and in practically every single one of his stories, it was a witch who was bad and a fairy who was good. To add insult to injury, it's well known that Hans had been welcomed by the sis by, by the Lucius bearer, and not by the bearer. The humans took that information and their imaginations ran wild. Oh, the power of storytelling. <sighs> ah. Excuse me. Hildir and I went to Hans to beg him to tell the truth, but it was too late. No matter what Hans said, everyone believed that he was being threatened. Oh no. <laughs> I don't think he ever meant for things to get so out of hand either. When the king at the time, your grandfather, also voiced his negative opinions on witches, he only added fuel to the fire. It was, as if, it was as if he was giving humans permission to carry on with it. <laughs> and, we couldn't, and we could do nothing to defend ourselves. We were bound by our oath to never hurt a living soul. The witch hunt lasted for years. Most of us were slaughtered. Oh, no. All witches are bound to the <coughs> bearer. Through the <coughs> itself. Hildir felt each of their deaths like it was her own. Oh, she kind of reminds me of Gollum, like evil but not really her fault. I don't know, that, that idea just popped into my head. It drove her mad. And she broke our oath. She killed the king, your grandfather. <sighs> Mother killed my grandfather? As Hildir's powers kept growing, more and more good witches were corrupted through her influence. I tried to stop her, but she was already lost to reason. 
Hildir wanted to take Angeal for the witches. She wanted to take revenge on the humans for what they had done to all of us. And since your father was next in line, Hildir forced Gennaro to marry her so she would have a legitimate claim to the throne. And she did it even though she knew he loved another woman. The very woman who sits on the throne today. Ophelia? Dolora nods. The king has always loved Ophelia? Oof. This is just so much. Your dear created a fairy tale cursed to punish humans. She wanted to fuel with hatred and anger. Parfait's voice becomes very soft. The balance between dark and light was lost. While Hildir lived, Angeal was a place of grief. I can feel an impending headache coming. I would totally feel the same. But... <sighs> Even if what you're saying is true, Mother is dead. She's been dead for four years. She is... She is, but for some reasons the witches are becoming more active. Garnet and Durian's patrols have confirmed this. Patrols? Is that why they disappear at night? I had to cast a glamour on you so that other witches would be unable to recognise you as princess. Glamour, that sounds cool. <laughs> but it seems like they've already seen through your glamour. They're looking for you, princess. The witches are looking for you. Gasp! <sighs> What? Why? The <coughs> needs a bearer. The witch needs to take a witch needs to take on that role and regulate the balance between Lucius and the Tenebrarum. I forgot how to say that word. I'm so sorry. For the part for the past few years, it's been in a state of hibernation. We believe Hildia infused her life into the Tenebrarum to keep it stable. But now, it is beginning to wake again. We believe that's why so many people are being cursed lately. The witches are preparing for their new bearer. Dolora turns to me with an expression I can't quite read. They only have to wait until you're... until you turn 18. Hmm. The air in the room seem, seems to... Seem, 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 the air the room seems to disappear all at once. Poof. Princess, on your 18th birthday, your curse will break regardless of whether you complete your three good deeds. And you will become the bearer. You will inherit that title and that power from your mother. Impossible. My heart is racing and I feel faint. Even if mother was a witch, I can't use magic at all. Halflings? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, so that just reminds me of hobbits. Um, I do like that film very much. All halflings like you inherit their magic at 18. That's so cool! No, I'm human. Princess, the Lord's expression is grim as she speaks. <sighs> We've been watching over you for a long time, he said. We know what sort of influence your mother had on you. The curse was a test. We needed to know that you wouldn't return Angel to what it was when your mother was queen. I can't allow another great war to tear, to tear Angeal apart. Dolora and I believe there is still goodness left in you. You just need to, you just needed a wake up call. That's the curse and the three good deeds. We wanted you to see what you hadn't in years, to be exposed to the true reality of things. And above all, we needed you, we needed you to see that you were capable of three good deeds. I attempt to grasp the fake thoughts in my mind, but to no avail. I feel numb. It is a lot to take on. That's it. No more secrets. Parfait's voice is gentle when she speaks to me. The future of this kingdom is in your hands. Will you follow your fo your father's? <laughs> will you follow your mother's footsteps, or will you achieve the same balance that we had before? Hmm. And that, I think, is an excellent place to stop. Thank you so much for sticking by, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye!